Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Korean barbecue style meatballs. That's right, I love anything Korean barbecue style and I really love meatballs. So I knew I was gonna love these and I did, despite making a huge mistake in the middle of the recipe, which almost totally ruined these. And we'll get into what happened in a little bit. But as the old saying goes, all's well that ends well. And this recipe ended very, very well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with one pound of ground beef. And if possible, we wanna go with an 85-15 ratio between lean meat and fat, which is perfect for meatballs. And then to that, we will add one nice big spoon of Korean chili paste, which is called gochujang. But if you can't pronounce that, just say go chef John, and that'll be close enough. And what we'll do is spread that evenly over the surface of the meat, before we move on to season this with some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and a little bit of soy sauce. And the reason we want these ingredients evenly dispersed over the surface is because that will take less time to mix in, which means less chance of overworking the meat, which means less chance of a tough, rubbery meatball. But anyway, continuing on, I went ahead and tossed in a whole bunch of finely minced fresh ginger, which was the huge mistake I spoke of in the intro. So let's go ahead and freeze the action so I can explain. Okay, for a pound of beef, that is way too much raw ginger. And not flavor-wise, I love ginger, and that would have been fine. But there's an enzyme in fresh ginger that will basically digest meat and make it soft and mushy, and not at all pleasant. And that is what almost wrecked this recipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and unfreeze this and add the rest of the ingredients. And then while I'm mixing this up, I will explain how you can avoid disaster. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, we'll add a whole bunch of crushed garlic and again, I'm spreading these ingredients over the surface, since if those were all in one spot, it would take longer to work the meat to get all that evenly mixed in. So this way we're giving ourselves a little head start. And then we'll also want a whole bunch of freshly and finely sliced green onions, followed by some breadcrumbs, or in my case, cracker crumbs, specifically Ritz cracker crumbs. And of course, we always want to try one to make sure they're okay. And all we need to do is transfer those into a plastic bag which is way easier than I'm making it look. And then once we eventually get those in there, we'll take a rolling pin or something heavy, and we will crush those crackers into very fine crumbs. And yes, you can just use regular crackers or bread crumbs. But the recipe I adapted this from used Ritz, and I love that little bit of extra sweetness and richness it adds. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are after all the Ed Balls of your Korean barbecue style meatballs. And I know I usually don't like to rhyme with the same word, but I made an exception this time, because that's how big a fan I am of Ed Balls. But anyway, once those are crushed, we'll go ahead and add a half a cup to our meat mixture, at which point I'm gonna take a fork and mix this until everything's evenly combined. Oh, and while I mix, let me go back to the ginger issue. If you are gonna put a ton of raw ginger in this, you have to deactivate it, which means it has to be heated to 150 degrees before you put it in. Or from what I hear, vinegar will do the same thing, and since we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of rice vinegar to our sauce later, you could soak the ginger in that and then strain it. And that will also deactivate the enzyme that makes the meat mushy. Or lastly, you could just add less, like a teaspoon, which would have probably been a more standard amount. But the point is adding a huge amount of raw ginger without deactivating it first can cause some major issues. But anyway, I didn't do any of those things. And I just mixed this up. And then I wrapped it up and popped it in the fridge and this is where I totally lucked out, because I was going to leave it in there for a few hours. But I didn't. I got impatient and decided to form my meatballs after just about 15 minutes. And by form, I mean roll this mixture into 12 equal size balls, using, yes, of course, damp hands, which as you well know make smooth balls. And I place those in this lightly grease roasting pan. And because that raw ginger only sat for about 15 minutes before I formed these, that enzyme did not have as much time to react and make that meat really, really soft. So for once, my impatience paid off. But even with just 15 minutes, these were borderline too soft. So I want to make sure everyone's been properly warned. But anyway, moving along, once our meatballs are shaped and in the pan, we'll go ahead and brown those by placing them into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until nicely browned. And hopefully looking something like this. And that's it, once we've completed that browning of the ball step, we will carefully remove those from the pan to a plate, where we will reserve them 
While we make the sauce, we're going to glaze our meatballs in. And we don't have to, but before we put this back in the stove, I usually drain off all but about a teaspoon of that fat, so our sauce isn't too, too greasy. But again, these kind of major decisions are up to you. And then for our sauce, we'll go ahead and toss in some finely minced garlic, and we'll set our heat to medium high, and we will cook that garlic stirring for about a minute, in whatever fat we've left in the pan, at which point we'll stop and deglaze the pan with some rice vinegar, as well as some soy sauce. And yes, that's the vinegar we could have soaked our ginger in. Or you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, we could have just put the ginger in the sauce, and not even messed around by putting it into the meat mix. And then this is definitely a sweet sticky sauce, which is why we need to add some brown sugar, which looks like a lot, but I think that's only like half of what was in the original recipe. And then we'll also want a little splash of beef broth, or if times are tough, just some water's fine. Plus another nice big spoon of gochujang, or as a lot of people are now calling it, go chef John. And that's it, we'll finish up with a little touch of sesame oil, and maybe a little squirt of shiratsa, depending on our mood. And we'll go ahead and stir that in, and wait for this to come to a simmer. At which point we're gonna let this reduce, by not quite half, maybe more like a third, so we can concentrate and intensify these flavors. And if you go too far, you can just add a little splash of water. And if you don't go quite far enough, that's fine. It will still work and be delicious. And while our sauce is reducing by about a third, we can multitask by mixing up our cornstarch slurry, which is nothing more than two teaspoons of cornstarch with one tablespoon of water mixed in. And we will stir that until that cornstarch is dissolved. And that's it. It is now ready to use to thicken our sauce which at this point, like I said, is reduced by about a third. And that is looking just about perfect to me. And what we'll do is reduce our heat to medium low, and we will pour in our slurry while whisking the entire time. And as soon as that's mixed in, our sauce will thicken up almost immediately, as well as take on a beautiful shiny appearance. And we're not really using that much, so this is not gonna get super thick, which is good. I'm not trying to make Korean barbecue style pudding, Right, we just want this sauce thick enough to glaze our meatballs. Speaking of which, as soon as our sauce has been slurried, we'll go ahead and place our meatballs back in. And we will baste those generously with our hot sauce. And basically as soon as those meatballs are heated through, we are ready to serve. Okay, so we'll let those simmer for a few minutes, basting generously, until they're nice and hot. Which shouldn't take that long, since they're probably still kind of warm from the oven. And the sauce really doesn't take that long to put together. And that's it. Once those are heated through, we're ready to serve up. And as far as garnishing goes, I like to finish up with some toasted sesame seeds and a few sliced green onions. And that's it. Our Korean barbecue style meatballs are ready to enjoy. And yes, that is one of the most gorgeous pans of meatballs I've ever seen. So I grabbed a fork and dug in. And keep in mind, at this point, I didn't realize that fresh ginger was going to be a problem. But as I took this first bite, I was thinking, that is the softest, most tender meatball I've ever made. But as I took the second bite, I realized it wasn't from not overmixing, or from anything else I did technique-wise. And it dawned on me it was actually the ginger tenderizing the meat, which was almost, but not quite to the point where these were too soft to eat. So like I said, I totally lucked out. And above and beyond the almost tragic texture... The flavors here were incredible. Okay, yes, these are sweet, but they're also extremely savory and spicy and a little bit salty, which I think all balances out that sweetness very well. So I breathed a sigh of relief, and I went ahead and plated some up on top of some rice. Next is some kimchi, which is always the perfect side for something like this. And if you've never had something like this, and you're wondering what you're getting into, it's sort of like a weird hybrid between Korean barbecue style beef and those sweet sticky cocktail meatballs that people used to make back in the 70s and part of the 80s. I know it sounds bizarre, and it kind of is, but in an extremely satisfying, comforting way. And of course, as always, if you don't want yours as spicy or as salty or as sweet as mine, you can simply adjust those things to your liking. But for me, when you eat this over rice, especially alongside something like kimchi, I think everything pairs together perfectly. Oh, and speaking of cocktail meatballs, if you made these like half the size, I think these would actually make for some fantastic cocktail meatballs at a party. 
since the only thing better than a meatball at the end of a fork is a much smaller meatball on the end of a toothpick. Okay, scientists still aren't sure exactly why, but that, my friends, is a fact. But anyway, no matter what size you make these, or what you serve them on or with, as long as you avoid adding all that raw ginger to the mixture and letting it sit for too long, I think you're going to absolutely love how these come out. Which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.